welcome to episode 12 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. Tonight we're talking about KS's Pony Farm from Moulton, Alabama. Uh, Ken and Pat Steele was a big part of POAs for a long, long time. They started breeding POAs in 1964 and continued, of course, until they passed away recently. And uh, Ken was a director for many, many years, decades, in fact. Uh, But their big impact was just breeding ponies for kids. They loved kids, and they bred an all-around pony. And uh, they used a lot of different bloodlines, and they created bloodlines. They named their POAs in such a way that it created uh, lines that people could remember. And, of course, they used the KSs on everything. They never wavered from that. They put KSs on all their POAs. And uh, we're going to have fun tonight talking about KSs and honoring them and their memory. Again, Ken and Pat Steele from Alabama. And uh, we have a great guest tonight, Lydia is going to join us from Alabama, and she spent 20 years at the KS's Pony Farm, uh, did a lot of showing for them, and uh, just helped run the ranch, and uh, she has a lot of memories and a lot of good stories. She's going to help me keep all these KS's ponies straight. Uh, Sometimes it's hard, and uh, I want to thank her and Missy Korn for uh, helping me with pictures and everyone else that sent pictures, but Lydia and Missy uh, sent the most. They sent a lot of pictures. I have Uh, pages and pages of information tonight usually I go off the top of my head but there's 106 pictures and some of these I wouldn't remember if I didn't write them down Uh, we do have a sponsor tonight the ROM sponsor is uh, Chris England Stallion KS's Koi's Fly High I'll show a picture of him in a minute it was fitting uh, that he's going to be a sponsor tonight since he is a KS's uh, Stallion so uh, let's get the show started here So this is a picture of KS's Pony Farm. This was taken early on. Of course, a lot of people that know the KS's know they did have a barn fire in 1993, and they did lose some ponies, but they had been breeding uh, for almost 30 years before that happened, and they continue breeding a long time after that. But, you know, this is a nice aerial view of their farm. They always kept a a nice place, and uh, they usually kept about 40 head of POAs or so, I'd say. Lydia may correct me that, but I know in the early days for sure they had quite a few like that, and a lot of times they had three or four stallions that they used. Uh, This is a picture of Ken and his wife Pat and their son Chip. It's actually Kenneth is uh, who we call Ken Steele, and then Chip is Ken, their son. And, uh, you know, Ken Steele was in the Air Force. He joined in uh, 1951, and he served for 21 years in the Air Force. And they, I wrote down all the spots they were, were, were at in the Air Force, but I'll probably forget some now. But I know they were in Bermuda, they were in Las Vegas, they were in Champaign, Illinois. And uh, so he joined the Air Force in 51, married Pat a little later, and then Pat started uh, going with them. They were in Taiwan, I know, as a family for a while. And uh, they started, uh, he started purchasing POAs, and they kept them at Ken's family's place in Moulton, Alabama, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Henry Steele was Ken's parents' name, and uh, as the Steeles were in the service, Ken and Pat, they kept buying up ponies and putting them in Alabama, and once in a while, they'd bring them with them when they were in Las Vegas. I know they had some ponies with them and showed in uh, California and some Nevada early shows in the 70s. When they were in Illinois, they met people like uh, Moser's and uh, Goldenrod Pony Farm from Iowa, and uh, so they were pretty, you know, pretty active, but some years they couldn't show, and they'd even write about that in the 70s if they were out of the country for a few years. They just took their ponies back to Alabama, to the to the Ken's folks' place, and they stayed there, so they were kind of out of the show scene. But then when he retired in, uh, in 71, I believe it was, they, uh, they started showing more, and uh, they started breeding more, and... Uh, this was their first, one of their first stars that they raised. Uh, he was born in 1971, and this is KS's Siri Warrior. And this is a pretty cool story. They took a GR's mare that was a ladies' warrior daughter, and they took her to Utah, I believe, when they were stationed in Nevada, and bred her to George Bishop's stallion, uh, Lannan Siri Super Dot. And the result was KS's Siri Warrior. And, you know, he was born... 30 years before a lot of these that we're going to be talking about tonight. So he was early, but he was one of their first really 
uh, successful POAs and they kept him as a stallion and they kept a lot of his daughters, which some of their stallions would end up crossing on and producing some uh, notable champions. So here's a good picture of him, KS the Siri Warrior. He became a supreme champion. Now, one thing I always admired about the Steels growing up is that the stallions they had, not just the ones they raised, but the ones that they purchased, they promoted in riding. They would go get a, a kid or someone and ask them to ride their horse, and they made Supremes out of most of the POAs they kept for stallions. They did the same thing with KS the Siri Warrior. So... This is Lynn McMillan, rode him as a Supreme, made him a Supreme champion. That's a good picture of him there. Keep in mind, he's a stallion. People showed stallions a lot more back then. There's when she's getting the Supreme Championship Award and giving Ken a smooch on the cheek. That's a young Ken Steele right there. That's in the 1970s. If you think about that, that's before he had Paper Tiger and some of those. So, Tracy, I just started a few minutes ago, literally five minutes ago you haven't missed hardly anything i was late tonight i apologize for being late but i do work 10 to 12 hour days and sometimes i have to take customers right up to the last minute and i had to finish a deal from memorial day which i worked yesterday so again if you're just joining us we're uh, talking about and honoring ken and pat Steele tonight in the ks's pony farm if you're not aware they are the leading breeder of national international champion and congress champions uh, they're the only breeder to uh, break the 200 mark. That means wins. That's not ponies. That's wins. So, you know, one pony could win 30 or 40 classes, which they've had some ponies do that. But it helps to be the breeder of a lot of POAs, but it also helps to get them in a lot of great hands. And that's another thing they did. Two things they did really well is they promoted their stallions and they found families to show their POAs. And we're going to be talking about some of those families tonight that really helped the Steels make the KS's name and Steels helped them provide a great ponies to them. So uh, after KS's Siri Warrior, the next famous stallion they had was Paper Tiger. And they purchased him as a five-year-old in 1978. He was a famous baby. He won the International Futurity as a baby. And uh, he was one of the POAs that came along that was bred to be a POA. You had like Ladies Warrior and Chief Little Britches that were in the 60s that were had a pony mom and an Appaloosa dad, but they weren't bred to be a POA. They became POA stallions and became famous. But this guy was actually, his mother was registered. They mated her to a stallion and got a registered POA at birth. So that's his sire on the top, Joker's High Tiger. He was owned by some famous POA people over the years. And then Chinook's Fa Flaxy is the mother. That's one of the Ekrotes there. I don't know if that's Megan or uh, Carrie. I think that might be Megan there. Carrie's going to be in some pictures. Uh, but anyway, Paper Tiger had a great Appaloosa pedigree for a 73 POA stallion. His two grandsires were very famous Appaloosas. His grandsire on the top side was the immortal Joker B. Here he is in a painting. Here's a real life photo of Joker B. If you've ever been in the Appaloosa business or stock horses period, you probably heard of Joker B. Carl Miles famous made help make him famous. And then on the bottom side, the little POA mare Chinooks Flaxy that I showed a picture of a minute ago, her sire was actually a national champion Appaloosa cutting and performance stallion named Simcoe Chinook. And this is him right here. He is a very unique stallion. And this is a very famous picture of him. I actually put this in spots included in uh, Paper Tiger's chapter because I, I love this picture so much. Bridalus cutting a cow with a a teenager, teenage boy on him. So, so that's the pedigree of black of uh, paper tiger. Joker B and Simcoe Chinook was his two grandsires. So Tracy said she's never seen that photo of Joker B. Well, that's what we try to do, Tracy. We try to show stuff that's never been shown to POA people. So, uh, here again is the mother of uh, paper tiger. This is. Uh, Chinook's Flaxy, she was a little pony, cute little mare. She became a supreme champion. So it was in the breeding. So, so there's Paper Tiger, and I believe that's Amy Sims. That's after the Steels purchased him. Now, when the Steels purchased him, he only had one registered foal. He was a famous POA already. He'd won the International as a baby, like I say, well, the Futurity, and he'd sold for a lot of money a few times in the sale. But by 
78, his career just wasn't catching on. He didn't, no one had put him to some mares and he hadn't went on the rail. Well, that all changed when he went to Alabama. Uh, he helped the Steels go to the next level and they helped him become a legendary sire. And uh, he's actually the number four, I believe, sire still of all time. Uh, right now, Paper Tiger, and he hasn't had foals in a long time. He's been gone a long time, of course, born in 73. So, again, they t put him on the road and made him a supreme champion. This is Amy Sims. Here's a good photo of him. You can kind of tell he's got that stock pony look, an Appaloosa dad to a supreme champion POA mare. You know, he was a little thick, but he, he had the bone and he had the structure. And uh, when they started crossing him, to their mares, to some of the KS Siri Warrior mares that I showed him earlier. It was just a, a great cross. And then later they brought in some more mares that we'll be talking about. And uh, they bred a lot of Supreme Champions, and many of them were by Paper Tiger. This is just an ad for him here. It's the same picture, but they used full page ads sideways. The Steels did, and I'll show you some of the stallions they advertised tonight. And they weren't afraid to use Appaloosa stallions. Uh, they always kept a couple good POA stallions around, but they are always on the lookout for little app stallions. And they found quite a few over the years that they added to their program. Another advertisement for Paper Tiger. So if you hear, heard of the KS's Tigers, I'm going to look at the Supreme Champion list here. According to POAC.org, there's been 23 Supreme Champion KS ponies. Now that may be, they, there might be a few left off. We know at least there's 23, but I'm thinking there might have been a few that were missed. But when you start looking at the list, you have KS's Tigers Paper Lion, KS's Tigers Jewel, KS's Flaming Tiger, KS's Tiger's Hot Stuff, KS's Tiger's Steel Breeze, uh, KS's Tiger's Breeze and Cat, uh, KS's Tiger's High Class, and Tiger's Lucky Lady. Who else do we have here? Tiger Be Lucky, KS's, of course, and uh, Crimson Tiger 2. So there was also a Crimson Tiger, but then we're all Supreme Champions with Tiger in their name. So like I said before, they were very good at whatever horse they were using. They would put that name and they continued that through the end. And you'll see in a while uh, what I'm talking about. Yes, Tracy, I'm going to be mentioning all those stallions. Actually, I'm going to be showing pictures of most of those, uh, not Major Shannon, but I'll be showing pictures of the other ones. So. So this is KS's Flaming Tiger, and that's Chip. I believe he was a 1980. He was kind of their first Paper Tiger superstar. And it's kind of funny, the only foal Paper Tiger had, here's a trivia question for you, the only foal he had before the Steels purchased him became a Supreme Champion. So that tells you Paper Tiger was a great sire, but he was five, six years old before, and he only had one foal. So it was good they put him on a band of mares. By the time they bought him, they probably had 40 POAs. In Alabama so this is flaming tiger here's tiger's jewel chaos is tiger's jewel congratulations to Todd Massey from Decatur I know he's on uh, the POA history page hopefully he's watching tonight and remembers chaos is tiger's jewel now in 1984 uh, the steels won the select sire for charity you know their stuff was mainly performance stuff but since they used so much horse blood crossing with their ponies they did hold their own in halter too. And uh, of course, this is KS's Tigers Breezing Cat, I believe, is who this is. He won the Futurity in 84, and Chip Steele showed him. And uh, let's see. Yep, KS's Tigers Breezing Cat was in 84. So, and they would win the Futurity again a couple times. They ended up winning the Futurity four times, twice in one year when it was broke up into junior and senior. They won the, the junior filly and senior filly. Here's the picture when they actually won. This was taken about a month after that colored photo. That's Chip Steele showing uh, KS's Tigers Breezing Cat. He would go on to be a supreme champion and in the Hall of Fame. Uh, the Steels have, uh, so far, eight of their POAs that they bred, eight KSs, are in the Hall of Fame. And there's another about five POAs that they used in their breeding program that's in the Hall of Fame. So that's saying a lot for their program, of course. I mean, if you own one or two POAs in your lifetime that go in the Hall of Fame, I'd consider yourself uh, lucky in that you did a great job. 
uh, seeing that they have five and then eight they bred, you know, you know they dedicated their life to POAs. Here's a breezing cat, Tiger's breezing cat. When he got older, like I say, he was a supreme champion, and a lot of different kids rode him. Hopefully people are watching tonight and can comment on here. Okay, this is our sponsor tonight. So this is a young stallion. He was one of the later KSs. He's a 19 or a 2019. So he's just a two-year-old. And, of course, his name is KS's Coys Fly High. And he's owned by Chris and Stephanie England from Hope, Arkansas. Uh, Chris is trying to uh, put a program together there. He's got some really nice mares. I've seen pictures of all his mares, and he's got a couple stallions. He's trying to breed kind of a ranch-type POA. And, you know, the KSs were known to do anything. So if they were still around now breeding, they would be, you know, paper tiger stuff would have been good at ranch stuff and a lot of the other stallions they crossed. So, uh I think he's going to be an up-and-coming stallion, so watch for the England's program and Hope, Arkansas. So this horse kind of looks like the one we just showed, didn't we, the, the fly high. So, of course, the Koi's fly high is because kind of impulsive, and that was they named most the kind of impulsive foals Koi. Well, this stallion here is K KS's JW's white lighting, and they picked the word twist to use for his because twist was in the background. And the story on him, I've talked to Ken about this in the past, is uh, they purchased his mare, his mother, Bandit's Breeze. I believe she was a 75 or a 76. And they bought her to breed the paper tiger. And uh, she had a baby on her side that was a yearling already. He was still uh, sucking on her side, and but he was not a weanling. He was already, the winter had passed. He wasn't in very good shape. Uh, Ken didn't even really want him at first, but he was little and he literally liked his mom, so they kept him, and he registered him as Appaloosa, named J.W. White Lighting. And uh, when the height limit changed, they hard-shipped him and ended up showing him, and he became a reserve champion, reserve grand champion at the international show in 1988. Uh, but the main thing he did was as a sire. Uh, he contributed a lot as a sire, and uh, his m mother is the mother to the one we just looked at, the tiger breezing cat. So that's where the bird breezing comes in. When you see the steel POAs with breeze or breezing, it usually came from his mother. So Paper Tiger and Bandit's Breeze was a great cross. But then the byproduct, the colt that they decided to keep, he actually became a Hall of Famer and a, a leading sire. He's still on the first page of National Champions. And, uh, yeah, his foals moved well. A lot of English. He had a lot of English foals, and he produced... A lot of roan fold with dark legs and dark heads, and we'll be seeing that. And these pictures are going to be not quite in order because it just takes so long to get 106 pictures in order, and I was running late tonight anyway. So I got the first part of the show in order, and then we're going to kind of be all over the place when we talk to Lydia, and she can help me uh, guide through the pictures, hopefully. But here he is all cleaned up as a mature stallion. This would be an 89 at the Southeast Regional, and that's Ken showing him there. Like I say, he was a grand reserve grand champion at the national show and uh, you see that dark mark on his leg there and the socks he threw some socks but he also threw those dark legs he'd have POAs like KS's Bandita Breeze that we'll be seeing later and several more the smooth twist and uh, half moon twist they were roans like him but then with dark legs and it made for a real pretty POA and they were really good uh, movers and really good English POAs so here he is under saddle this is Brenda, I believe, riding him. Hopefully I got the right name. I'm pretty sure that's Brenda Hendrickson showing him. Okay, here's one of the foals I'm talking about right there. That's uh, Laura Grayson with uh, Lauren Grayson with uh, KS's Bandita Breeze. She didn't have the twist in her name. She was one of the earlier ones, but see the dark socks and the roan body? She became a famous famous mare the Graysons showed her and did well and then of course the Chernegas showed her Jackie did well with her here she is jumping great mare yeah, good looking mare see that color that's just a unique color uh, Steels had quite a few stallions that had get known for their unique color ability what they threw and the people remembered their foals for their color here he is with Jackie jumping, kind of a fancy 
apparatus there, fancy jump. So she had some uh, issues later in her career, this mare, and uh, they did get her bred to the realist, the Burton's bred her to the realist, and she produced one full uh, before she passed away, and that became TX's Dina's Real Miracle, hence her name. Bandina Breeze is her mother. They called her Dina, and this is Dina's Real Miracle. And in her prime, she was one of the uh, model POAs of all time. If you look at her, she looks like a Briar model st standing there. And, uh, of course, Chernegas had her, of course, because of the mother. And then she went to other places. Spencer's had her lately. This mare just passed away a few weeks ago. And, uh, again, what a great mare. And she roaned out, but she kept her spots and she kept her look. And uh, she's had a lot of good babies for the Spencers. And, uh, of course, she was a, a grand champion mare. And at this picture right here in 2004, she was the international show grand champion mare. But she was also a great mover, too. But impressive on the top side, and then uh, KS's JW white, white lighting on the bottom side. So here's one of the POAs. Some of these I'm going to uh, have a hard time with. I think I'm going to give Lydia a call. So, And if you're in one of these pictures, speak up. So I had people from all over send me pictures. I apologize if I can't get the picture on tonight. But I tried as hard as I could to get all the pictures on. So this show's live, so this is how we do it. We just call right right while we're looking at pictures, and hopefully Lydia's off of work, and she can talk, and I'm Bluetooth, and everything's hooked up. Tracy, tell me if you can hear her when she comes on. Two, five, six, uh -oh. six, zero, five, four. Get that off. Okay. Well, she didn't answer, so hopefully she calls me back. Uh, I know she was working late tonight, too. So here's Missy Corn with one of the KSs. I hope Missy's on here tonight and she can help me out. Like I say, I have a whole bunch of pictures to go through. So, and a lot of these are from different sires, alias Ghost King. My phone isn't ringing. Yeah. Okay, let's try it again. It says it's calling Alabama, so I'm in the right area. Well, go ahead and give me a call, Lydia. I'll give my number. I'm not afraid to give my number over the thing. So it's 580-977-8923. Yep, that's KS's Tigers Breeze and Kitty. So if you got that number, 580-977-8923, that's for Lydia to give us a call. Well, that's my number, Tracy. I just gave my number up, <laughs> so... Now, I know who this, well, it says it on top, too, but I would have known who this is. This is KS's Smooth Twist. He is a beautiful POA. Uh, Gretchen Wall rode him in Washington, and I know he went on to be, I believe, a supreme champion. And, uh, that again, that's that color, uh, that Alias King, or not Alias King, uh, KS's JW White Lighting would throw is some socks, but then those dark socks from the knee down and the roney body. Hello? Can you hear me? Can. Yes. Can. Hey, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Let me turn up your Bluetooth. Tracy, can you hear Lydia? Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I'm asking Tracy if she can. So uh, <laughs> I got pictures all over the place, so I really need some help here. So okay. are you watching the show too? I am. Okay. I don't know how big a lag you have, but we can hear. Yay. People can hear you. So that's good. So, uh, all right. Well, there's one snappy ghost. I'm getting to ones with pictures, but, uh, I'm honoring the corns a little bit tonight because, you know, as a POA breeder, you wish to have a family uh, purchase your POAs that are going to do stuff with them. And didn't Ken once say that the corns was the KSs of the North or something like that because they had so many so many KSs up there. But, uh, he they, did. He called them the North 40. <laughs> the North 40, yep, yeah, that's what. So, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, Richard and Linda Corn and their two sons, uh Shane and Todd, and then Shane's wife, uh, uh, Nicole, right? And then uh, Missy mm -hmm. is uh, Todd's wife, and they all did well showing POAs. Of course, Shane and Todd grew up in POAs, and Missy did in Michigan, I guess. But she wrote a lot of – we'll be just seeing a lot of pictures of her tonight with POAs. But this is Dusty Corn on One Snappy Ghost. So he goes back to Alias Ghost King and probably, what, KS's Snappy Pants or one of those, right? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, smoky pants. Smoky oh. pants, and there, there is uh, smoky pants right there. So that's a good picture of him. Not long after Steels purchased him in 1984, and again they put him back on the road and made him a supreme champion. I was talking earlier about how they always would uh, show their, you know, they made Paper Tiger a supreme, and they even brought out White Lighting under saddle and then showed him. And uh, there's a side shot of of smoky pants and we're going to look at one later that looks a lot like him <laughs> i think his son looks a lot like him years later but uh and there he is mm -hmm. under saddle and i believe that is uh is that kim still that road smoky pants i think i'm guessing it is i haven't gotten the picture we, up yet yeah there it is. but yeah. i think that's her yeah mm -hmm. so it is yeah, so there's KS, but I think that's for Kim still. So, uh, right. KS is, uh, they always throw historians loopholes, you know, not loopholes, but curveballs. So, um, so here's a great picture. I know you got a little bit of lag, but this is the two uh, Crimson Tigers, and that's Ken on the right holding one. So there was KS's Crimson Tiger and then KS's Crimson Tiger 2, and mm -hmm. both beautiful red and white. They were Paper Tiger sons out of uh, a double tough daughter right was it doc's doc, double date doc's double date yeah when mm -hmm. doc's double date was crossed the smoky pants she'd produced some famous poas and then the steels purchased her and bred her to a uh, paper tiger and then of course later they bred her to smoky pants as well but this is just a, a great picture here because they both went on uh i know ks's uh crimson tiger twos in the hall of fame i believe he was he was a great gelding so and I think there's a picture of uh, one of the Thomas boys. Is it Spencer that rode him, yeah. I think? Yeah. And mm -hmm. that's, oh, there it is. I do some things right. So <laughs> it's not on your screen yet. But he, I know, and he was owned in Decatur, too. And he, I rode in spots included that he was one of the the best gildings at the international show, you know, for just his classes. He dominated his classes uh, year he after did. year. Yeah. And, and he racked up a lot of those wins for the Steels. And he was a beautiful, he looked like Paper Tiger brought a double tough daughter to me. I mean, that's what he looks like, you know. And, yep. and uh, he was he was a great POA. So, okay, here's a picture of Missy. I should have had Missy. Uh, I should have flew one of you out here so you could be sitting here. But she's, it's 1991. And I think that's Strawberry Twist, if I'm not it mistaken. Is. Yeah, okay. So I did a little research for tonight. But, and of course, some of it, you know. So she won the Futurity as a baby but we'll be seeing that later i held that towards the end uh so but she won in 1987 i believe todd showed mm -hmm. her when she won so and then this is todd's wife wrote her in jpfc so both uh missy and todd and shane they all did great in jpfc they were already in poas before there was a jpfc so that was kind of a blessing for them and i think kind of helped keep them in poas you know by r riding the jpfc ponies so Okay, so this would be, I think, KS's Aim for Fame. Uh, this picture was sent to me with Gary Hamilton's name cut off, so I didn't do that, but I'll give him credit for the photo. This would have been at a national show. And I think that's who showed, I think Brenda showed him. 
uh, Brenda, I'm, I might get some. Brenda there. Henderson. Yeah, yes. Brenda Henderson. And I know there's some more pictures of her. That's not one of them there. That picture's out of whack there. But this is too blonde to boogie. We'll go back to her. But uh, that's a... Uh, okay, here's KS's Tigers High Class. This is another uh, Supreme Champion and Hall of Famer from the Tiger Class. You know, when you look at these numbers, Lydia, it's just, it's mind-blowing. I'm gonna, Some of the registration numbers... And full crops, you know, I was talking earlier, if a breeder breeds for one or two famous POAs, you should, you know, you, you're doing good, like two Hall of Famers, that would be great. But you look at some of these registration numbers, KS's Tiger Be Lucky was 33,356, and then KS's Flashy Pants was 33,345. That means they were born the same year. You know? That's right. <laughs> and then you have yeah. some of these, like KS's Tiger's Lucky Lady, in KS's Tigers High Class, they were 30,569 and 30,568. They were registered back to back. And that goes on, you know, candy pants and some kind of twist were one number apart. And uh, mm -hmm. some of these others were, you know, 10 numbers apart, or Tigers Breezing Cat and uh, Stan McGran were one number apart. So they produced multiple Supreme Champions in many full crops. And it's just. It's mind-boggling, you know, just year after year, the, the great ponies that they churned out. So here's a great picture. These are the two corn boys, which I shouldn't call them boys. They're older than me, but uh, Shane and Todd, and uh, they both grew up in POAs, like I say. And here was kind of the new new beginning of the KSs, these two stallions. So this would be KS's flashy pants and KS's dash for pants, right? When that picture was on the front cover of the POA magazine, the title was, Have You Ever Seen a Better Pair of Pants? <laughs> Have You Ever Seen a Better Pair of Pants? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of starch there, but yeah, there, <laughs> there was some, they were some good pants. And that, like I say, that, uh, and now Dash for Pants, that goes back to the Doc's Double Date, Marion. That he was out of her. Now, both of those are out of Doc's Double Date. Oh, they're date. both they're full, full brothers. Okay. Full brothers. All mm -hmm. right. So they're full brothers. And that cross had worked for Smoky Pants Breeder. Uh, Dr. James Black in Indiana, and then uh, the Steels ended up getting the factory there. You know, they bought the mare and the, the sire, but they bred them to different mares and different stallions, of course, but then they ended up putting them back together, and, and that became kind of the, the modern KS program right there, wouldn't you say, those two stallions? Kind of took over the torch from Smoky Pants and Paper Tiger? Yeah. Well, Flashy Pants was sold and, and was gilded. And he was gilded? He was the Supreme Champion. Okay. But, yeah, KS's Dash for Pants died on KS's Pony Farm mm -hmm. when he was 19. 19, okay. So, And a lot of the KS's Dashes would be his, right, if they had Dash right. in the name. So. Mm -hmm. Like KS's Dashes 007 was his. Right, and that'll be coming up here somewhere in the, the vast pictures that we have. So here's Missy again holding the probably i would say an alias ghost king i haven't gotten no, to him it's forever a ghost forever a ghost okay yeah reserve champion and at that show there at the mid-america this is a cream puff twist she was in 1984 i think yeah because she sold at the 85 sales a yearling was mm -hmm. so that's her, I think that... And she was over height when she sold at the sale, and yeah. she grew up to be 54 inches. Right. My dad was at that sale. She sold for like three grand, and, and she was over height, and she became a, mm -hmm. a famous mare. She was, I think, didn't the Greers buy her? Mal Greer wrote yeah. her? Yeah. And I believe this kid's name might be Pete or something like that. Uh, Richard Peters. Richard Peters. I was close. Yeah, really was close. Richard, okay. And I remember seeing her at that show, and because uh, she was from Michigan. They were in Michigan at the time and she had some age on her of course in this picture and she still was was getting it done. So mm -hmm. This is a great picture here. This is Ken and and Todd holding father and son. And I know this picture has been used in advertising. I had this in spots included. I think Ken really liked this POA cuz I seen some pictures of him holding him and of course Todd's holding him here, but this would be KS's JW White Lighting and then his son that the Steels bred and that's Smooth Twist, right? Yes. Yeah, a smooth twist. And he became he became a supreme champion, I'm pretty sure, didn't he? Or yes. in our own Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Todd probably rode him in JPFC, I think, but didn't he go out he did. out to the northwest, I think? 
Yeah, Gretchen Walla wrote Gretchen. him from Washington. Yeah, I mentioned her name earlier. So, yep, she did well with him. He was such a flashy. Isn't it funny how white lighting through those those roans and those dark legs? I've been talking about that. You know how he's not the first one we've seen with the two socks. His dam was a roan. His dam was a roan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Todd bought smooth as a weanling. Okay, that's good. Uh, this is KS's aim for fame again. She was one of them that didn't have twist on her name, but she was one of the first full crops, I think, for for white lighting. And there she is taking a breather, taking some water out of the, the faucet there. Okay, this is KS's uh, tuxedo something ghost, I think's his name, isn't he? He's in a, a cart. KS's yes, custom tuxedo ghost. And there you go, custom tuxedo <laughs> ghost. I think the picture with you holding him and her there didn't make. Who's the, the lady driving him, Lydia? Laura Grimes. From Laura Tennessee. Grimes from Tennessee. Okay. We want to give her some credit. So that one picture I don't think made it. It should have. But I got to do a lot of stuff to get these on the air. And it takes almost all day in between uh, doing my normal job. So, okay. So, the, yeah, you understand. I'm glad you could join us tonight, by the way. So thanks for being here. I, I needed help for one, but I wanted to have you on here anyway. Uh, Thank you. So this is a cool picture. You know, Jan Rogers was our guest last week. And she's in this picture because she was a sponsor and and helped create the Oldest Pony Award at the International Show. And it's meant to be to recognize the oldest POA competing at the show. And in 2011, that was kind of a cool deal because these were all from the same full crop, correct? Yes. Yeah, and that's pretty cool. So they were all the oldest ponies, and they were all from KS. So there's Ken and Pat standing there. I don't. I probably know these kids, but I wouldn't be able to pick them out in the pictures here. It's KS's Tiger's Lucky Lady and Gabrielle Gayweiler. Okay. KS's Half Moon Twist and Ashley Corn. Okay. And KS's Tiger's High Class and Samantha Bowen. Oh, wow. Yeah. I believe those ponies were all 24 that year. Right. Yeah, they, and almost all of them are supreme champions, I think. So. Um, Looney was not, she needed one grander reserve to be. Did she really? But she's in the Hall of Fame. All but three of those ponies are in the Hall of Fame. She's in, yep. That's the only one of the ones that are, you know, I have 23 Supreme Champions written down, and there may be more. I think there's some missing, but that's off the POA website. And then eight Hall of Fame POAs, and KS's Half Moon Twist is the only one in the Hall of Fame that's not a Supreme Champion. So, from my records, anyway. So, mm -hmm. but that's a cool picture, too, and that should be in the Hall, in the museum someday. Once we get a museum, that picture should be in there. So... Here's Smoky Pants at the International Show uh, in 1986. That would have been in Oklahoma City. So I believe he went to the International Show a couple years while the Steels had him. So I believe that, so. Yeah, and that was Kim, Kim Still there. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, here's a POA. Let's see. I have this written down because I wrote in my notes yellow ropes. It's in the sales ring. And like I say, I got pages and pages of notes with pictures, so it's almost... That's K.S. is Tiger's Breeze and Sun. Okay, K.S. is Tiger's the Breeze and Sun. Bandit's Breeze and Paper Tiger cross again. Oh, okay, that cross again. So that crossed a lot of good, uh, made a lot of good cross. Oh, so that's, I think that's a Hanson girl from Minnesota holding him there, I believe. I might be I'm wrong. I'm not sure. But, Okay, let's see. Here's a KS's that was up in South Dakota. I think this is Jody Carr. Do you remember which POA she wrote? This is Tiger Steel Breeze. Steel Breeze, okay, yeah. I remember him showing in 1986. I believe Jill Arp, who became Jill Ellsworth, mm -hmm. showed him, yep. and he did well in 86. So, uh, But this was 2003. She's showing him at the Champ Show there in South Dakota. Okay, here's a cool picture of uh, Jim Keegan and... Uh, and Ken in 2001, and this is one of the later Supreme Champions. This is uh, Dashing Illusion, I believe. She's a baby in the picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she grew up to be a Supreme Champion. She was a, a good built PO. I remember Ken showing her. I think he showed her, didn't he, at the Futurity? Ken did? Um, no, or, actually, or did, I believe Bill Rainwater showed her. Oh, did he? Okay. I remember um, her out there. That mare, yeah, she was pretty. Yep. That mare has been on the cover of Horse and Rider magazine and also been in the Hobby Horse catalog multiple times. 
Okay. Okay. Kim still just said I took pants to two international shows. Yep, OKC and Columbus. So that would have been 85 in Columbus and 86 in OKC. So that's cool. This filly was on covers. So she's a she's representing POA well. So she's got the look for sure and became a supreme champion. So here you are showing one of the later ones. This is probably a kind of impulsive, I would guess, offspring. You're in a trail pattern here. With yes, yellow this new twist on impulse. New that's twist. That's the first um, kind of impulsive first full. Oh, okay, that's his first full. So, yep. so he was reserve champion in in hand trail. Okay, cool. So with you, Shoner, that uh, that stallion kind of impulsive was purchased as a baby by KS's, and uh, he was bred by Larry Gibson and right from Wisconsin. Yeah. But they bought him and raised him. And, he was one of the later stallions there. So here's one of the earlier ones. Again, this is J.W. White Lighting. I talked about him and the st story Ken told me about buying the mare, and he was still on the side, although he was older already. He It wasn't the current year. you know. But... He fold three days after he bought her. Oh, he weaned he? that cold immediately, and he was so ugly that he called somebody to come get him. <laughs> and um, she... I, He either sold him really cheap or gave him to the uh, friend of ours. Right. And then when he was coming to, he called Ken and said, you really ought to come look at this colt because he's looking better. So he right. brought him back. Yeah, I think yeah. he told me like he had rain rot and stuff or all that. But mm -hmm. yeah, because the mare yep. was ready to full again. Right. That's yep. what. Yeah. And she mm -hmm. fold three days later. So, yep. yeah, well, he made his mark in POAs. I mean, his mother did, too, but crossing mm -hmm. the paper tiger. But uh, he definitely, he's, when I created those leading sires lists, that helped people know that he was one of the leading sires, Smoky Pants, and of course, Paper Tiger was way up there. Here's Moolah Hardway. They had him for a while. He was an Appaloosa stallion. I believe uh, Spud Snyder had him in Montana, and then Ken got a hold of him. I don't know how much they used him, but I know this is a cool picture and just kind of shows the type of horse they wanted to cross, you know, and then later Major Shannon, and of course, White Lighting, but... Um, Here's Alias Ghost King, so another Appaloosa uh, that they got. I remember when he was advertised in the POA magazine. Uh, of course, I don't live very far from where he was born, you know, down in Oklahoma City. Uh, the statue's still up of his sire, so Alias King. It's just a white horse, you know, up in the, I think it's a stable now. It's not a breeding, breeding center anymore, but um, he made his mark on the, POAs and on KSs for sure. So and you guys used Alias on his foals. We started out using Alias, but most people couldn't say Alias when they were announcing it, and they'd call him Elias, so we went with Ghost <laughs> instead. You ended up doing the Ghost, yeah, okay, <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. Because, yeah, if you're not in the Appaloosas and then in the POAs, you know, of course, Alias King became really famous as the sire of Dreamfinder. And right. uh, as Dreamfinder was really becoming famous, uh, alias Ghost King, his half brother was uh, siren champions in Alabama. So that was always a cool story. But yeah, we all know Alias. Of course, Alias Smith and Jones was a f you know that's a show and everything. But that was Alias King sire. So that's where that name right. comes from. So here's Chaos is jamming with the ghost. I found some old calendars. I knew uh, Ken and Pat had advertised in the calendars. So. I dug some of those out last night when I was in a panic about midnight. And uh, so <laughs> what? But you and Missy really, uh, you really came through for me. Both of you sent me a lot of pictures. So, and not many doubles. There was a couple that was the same, and there was a few that I'd found in the magazine, but very few. This show would have been a lot shorter without your guys' help. So, what can you tell me about jamming with a ghost? He was purchased by the Aston family as a weanling. Okay. And they showed him, um, showed him mainly as a yearling, I think, and got, I'm trying to remember, that was a long time ago, Ken. Oh, <laughs> well, I know, um, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but that's... I think, I think he needed just a couple of more halter points to have his ROM when we bought him back as a four-year-old. Okay. And um, I know we took him to the Southeast Regional Show the year we bought him back, and that was the only show we took him to. Okay. Well, and, it says here, ROM Halter, so you guys got mm -hmm. it got yeah. it done. Yeah. 
Yeah, he was a good looking stallion. Nice head. Of course, yeah, ask them. The, go ahead. Very good minded. Some of the yeah. best minded I have ever had. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Do you remember who his mother was? I'm really putting yes. you on the spot. Yes, hey, so she's a boogie twist. She's she a was boogie a twist. full sister to KS's he's a nifty twist. Okay. Um, Boogie was shown in JPFC as a two-year-old, I believe, and they weren't, they didn't have the high point at that time, but she would have been reserve high point if they had been giving that award out. Okay. Okay. Tracy just said, yes, he won the Mideast and Northeast as a yearling. So when Mm -hmm. Aston's at him, so, all right, well, that's jamming with the ghost. I believe this is KS's notorious ghost where there's the, the ocean and the sunset, yeah. that picture, yeah. So, so did, he and Jammer were by the same fire, and right. then their dams were full sisters. Okay, so that explains the heads, because the heads look kind of, you know, they're both pretty headed. They look pretty much identical. Yeah, so. in both few few spots, I guess. So, uh, Did he go to Indiana, Notorious yeah. Ghost? Yeah. So, I'd miss you on him. Okay. All right. Another favorite, Tracy said. So if you don't know, Tracy's one of our main uh, contributors here. Actually, I had her on the show as a guest, but she comments a lot, and I know it's her. Some people haven't logged into Ecamm Live or whatever, so I can't tell it's them. But Tracy, I can tell who it is. So uh, here's uh, Shane Corn on probably Flashy Pants, I think, uh, 1994 World Show. Yeah. Yeah. And at that time, the McLaren Futurity was held at the World Show, and he won that, too. He won that. Okay. Yep, mm-hmm. I remember the the McLaren started out not at the International. And, yep, because the Crisco Kid won it, and it still wasn't there yet. And then, yep, he won it. So he... We were at the International Show in Michigan one year. I don't remember which year it was when it was in Michigan, but um, the Craig family had flashy pants, and they came and brought him. And they're so excited to see Flashy's here, Flashy's here. And <laughs> I just, you know, I had never seen him before. And right. I'd never met Smokey Pants, but they were so excited to see him. And I said, well, why didn't you keep him for a stud? Because they were so excited to see him. And uh, Miss Pat choked up in about two seconds and says, he looked too much like Pants. He looked too much like Pants. Well, he does. Yeah, he does yeah. look like Pants. He, he, he definitely does. Uh, okay, well, here's uh, here you are showing uh, one of my favorite later KS's POAs, and this is 007, I believe, right? Dash is 007. Mm-hmm. He's the one that went to Australia? Yeah. Yeah, I always liked him. He just ha- had good structure about him, you know, and he had he didn't have the littlest head in the world, but he had a really keen head, you know, keen mm-hmm. eye and nice muzzle and just perfect mm-hmm. color, really. I mean, I like chrome, but there's something to be said about a horse with no socks and a star, too, especially with that cool blanket. But, he, uh, yeah. yeah, I remember you showing him. You did pretty well with him. He was a lot of fun. He was yeah. really quiet and laid back, and uh, he reminded me a lot as far as his personality of the stallions that the Beatties have. Okay, this is naturally nifty. They're both super laid back. Okay, right. Here you are riding him, so and he would have been a stallion, so mm-hmm. he might have been young there. I don't know if he was two um, or three. That, the halter wind picture and also the trail picture are both from when he was a three-year-old. Three-year-old, and okay. And that was the year that um, he went exported to Australia. Okay. He, he left the same week that we headed to Futurity. Okay. Now, did you guys get some foals by him before he left? We bred him to two mares. Okay. Because um, when we were showing him, we had not bred him at all. So okay. he was a three-year-old. And obviously before they shipped him to Australia, they wanted to know if he was any good as a stud. <laughs> right. So um, we called around and nobody was collecting. And we are like, well, what are we going to do? So we had a mare come in heat. Case's Tiger's Date of Dream, who was another cross of the Paper Tiger and Doc's Double Date. Right. And so we said, well, we would just breed her and collect him that way. And then we thought, well, if we bred her once, we would just go ahead and finish her cycle. And then the week after she was in heat, her full sister, KS's Tiger's Dazzle Date, came in heat. So we had two colts, 
one born in July and one born in August. Wow. And those are the only two of his folds that were born in the United States. And okay. one of them is a gelding and lives in somebody's back pasture in Huntsville, Alabama. And the other one is KS's Handsome as a Bond, whom I showed and is now owned by the Oldham family in Oklahoma. Okay. All right. I don't have a picture of him, I don't think, but he, he is a beautiful horse, too. He looks something like his dad, didn't he? Or doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah, colored a lot like that. Yeah. He smaller, uh, but he thinks small. he's bigger than that. He thinks he's bigger. Yeah, well they all do, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. So all right, well that was cool. So oh there's Tuxedo. I do have the picture. I just didn't have it in order. There's a custom tuxedo with you and uh would you say Laura Grimes? Yeah. Right, yeah, there's at the at the Congress, so with the jacket. Now she also had his full brother. Okay. His ghosty snow tiger. Okay, uh -huh. I remember. She was, she was my bestest horse show buddy. We oh. had lots of fun. Okay, at that's the shows cool. in Tennessee. We yeah. would, um, she would show Snowy. She'd make me show both of them, but we had to go back for Grand. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> she'd take Snowy, and we, the judges would stand there and try to decide which one they liked for Grand Champion. Right. One time we came out of the arena, and she beat me, and I started stomping around and kick dirt on her i can't believe you beat me and everybody was looking at us like what are you doing and right. we just started laughing yeah i got... thought we were serious right your travel buddies and the, the same horses basically it's the same program yeah. he was a, that was a good name for him too because of the socks and then the dark color and custom tuxedo yeah for sure uh okay here you are again those same poles you know that photographer <laughs> liked that setup but it's a different Probably a yearling, I would guess, or a two-year-old. This one was a two-year-old. Okay. Case is jamming my socks off. Okay. All right. Yep. His dam is actually a maternal so sister to Case's Tiger's Hot Stuff. Okay. A famous POA in the Hall of Fame, I believe, right? Hot Stuff. Yeah. His, yep. um, this colt dam was actually a quarter horse. Hot Stuff's dam was a quarter horse. Right. Okay. And we bred her to, to Jammer. Okay, to Jammer, right. Okay. All right, here we go with, uh, I think this is one of the twists, Half Moon Twist maybe. This is a cool picture because this is Missy Corn with uh, Richard Corn in the picture. Yes. Holding the belt That's buckle. Half Moon Twist. Half Moon Twist, yeah. Mm -hmm. She went to Michigan, right, to Pennington's? I yeah. Th yeah, I need to mention she them too because they were, I believe, they supreme three of them at least. And they Penningtons were a good family that uh, were big believers in the KSs and they kept going back and getting some good ones. And uh, yeah. yeah, from Michigan, they ended up having the Silver Kid. Um, okay. Let's see, that might be her. I don't know if that's her and Halter or not. Missy Shoner. I know you got a little lag there, but you're doing oh, pretty good. No, that's um, that's Kaya's magic twist. I magic think. twist, okay. Yeah, yeah she we looks need a to little have different. A small star. Yeah, and this is a bigger. This goes down. Yeah, and it's a little different color too. So, Missy's probably watching this, or we'll watch it later and be saying she won this, she won that. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't, I'm just lucky to keep a track of the name. So if I get if I get the dashes and the tigers and the twists all together. Uh, See, somebody just put KE's magic twist, but they meant KS's uh, uh, yeah, magic that twist. Was here. Yeah. So. That's Looney. There's Looney there. So I just had him out of order. And there's that classic quarter horse look, you know, with the, the dark head and the roan, you know, and the, the dark socks. And POA just didn't have that at the time. You know, well, they mm -hmm. still don't really. So, uh, yeah. She's well, you common don't commonly interested. get that with the Appaloosa color, too. Right. That's the, the, so hard to do, and that's what made white lighting unique. And then later, uh, they introduced uh, Alias Ghost King, and he had some, you know, unique genetics in him from both sides. So, yeah, you mm -hmm. you never quite knew what was going to come out, really. So, uh, Okay, I think I know this one. I think this is some kind of twist, uh, I believe. This would have been in 1988. She won... Probably three year old mares. Two year old, two -year -old mares? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, was she a mare. was junior champion mare. Jun that's right. She was junior champion, so she had to be a two year old because she's holding the junior black there. So and that's Missy, isn't it? There, yeah. yeah. 
So Tracy said she's commenting, so I just can't tell it's her because it says Facebook user. So he said, yep, that's probably her right there. So and that was a nice looking mare back in the day. So junior champion. Yep. Okay. Who you that never was know the what same we, year that her sire was reserve grand champion. Right, eighty eight when uh KS is JW White Lighting, yep, was reserve grand in eighty eight. Yep. Here's just a snapshot. I got some snapshots on the farm that Missy sent me. Some of the mares hanging around feeders and some of the babies. Mm-hmm. I saved some of these to the end, but I just threw this one in here. Uh, okay, this is one you'll recognize. This. I love the head on this mare and the big front socks. And let me see if I got, before you tell me who it is, because I know you know this, this is one of the more modern ones. Let's mm-hmm. see if I can guess who this is with my notes. One sassy ghost. Yep, KS is one. Uh, if I didn't have my notes, I wouldn't have known it. But uh, Karen Carr sent this picture to me. So uh, mm-hmm. I think she ended up in a book. This mare ended up in some book representing POAs and KSs. So the steals. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. She was a. I wish it would have been a full shot. You know, for us people that judge and stuff, we like to see everything. But that still is a cool shot. So, and the dark red knees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was actually a dun. She was a done, yeah. Yep, that's cool. Yep, and somebody commented Karen Carr's mare. Yep, Karen sent me this picture, so. Um, okay, here you are again, and I put on my notes on this one, the orange cones, but I'm not going to look it up since you're live now. 2012, <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. my comment, orange cones. So. That's okay, it's cool to be nifty. It's cool to be nifty, okay. So this would be a he's a nifty twist offspring? Yeah. Okay. And well, his dam was by alias Ghost King and the last daughter of Doc's Double Date. Okay, cool. Cool, that's, yep. A lot of KS is breeding there, so. Mm-hmm. You know that uh, one of our sponsors tonight is Chris England's advertising his two-year-old stallion that he's going to keep his koi stallion. And I told him it was like seven generations KS's because yep. it goes all yep. the way back to Siri Warrior. I believe yep. in uh, that's something else, you know, seven generations from the same farm. That's uh, a, lot, a lot of history there. So, And he goes to Paper Tiger three times. Three times, yep. Yeah. So here's a mare. I wish we had a little better picture. She sent me a lot of pictures, uh, but uh, Charlene Aston did. But this is, what's her name? KS is Boogie with a Ghost. Is that her name? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she's one of the all-time great mares. She uh, she became a great brood mare, and she won the brood mare or the yeah the brood mare class several times, mm-hmm. twice at least. Yeah. And I remember she also won the produce a dam class produce. with KS's jamming with a with a goat. Okay, mm-hmm. for their mother, yeah, yeah, and she was just a tremendous mare, and she helped, she brought. Aston's little two two mare program on the map. You know what I mean? They're they're on the first page. When I say pages people it's because there's printed out pages and there's like 20 some pages of people that's bred for national champions and i remember when aston's got their first one and all of a sudden boom boom boom, here they come you know and they had cappuccino and this mare for a long time they've used some other mares too uh, but they bred to leo's gold peppy and some other horses and uh, i think she's had four or five national champions by herself so here's a hindquarter shot of her and of course this would be their Aston's granddaughter right I think sitting on her so yep and she's Tracy's jumping the gun like she always does she's a damn speaker of the house. Tracy you got to go with the flow so uh, their speaker of the house there and two of the others so this would have been uh I believe that speaker in there I think yeah but I'll show a picture of him but this is three of her offspring and then I'll go on their speaker of the house international show grand champion stallion in 2006 and of course Tracy that was her stallion for a long time yes I agree with you Tracy she does bl- belong in the Hall of Fame so that'd be another KS's I'm sure there'll be a few more KS's get in the Hall of Fame so I think uh eight's the record now you know with the prefix I could look it up and see but I don't think there's eight from any one prefix besides KS's so but here's Speaker of the House he's made a career for himself as a as a sire and he was a, a good halter horse here's a good picture of him a profile shot of him yeah 
Okay, this is one of her. I think Socket to me is that the one that was that Alex Langhorse rode? I believe. Yeah, yep. and that was a boogie baby. I want to say that I've been waiting all night to say boogie baby. And there he is <laughs> in uh Native American costume. This is I think hot commodity. Didn't hot commodity grow up to be short? A short mare, I think, but or but this was her as a baby. Or maybe a him, I don't know, but uh here's another one i know i got a bunch of pictures he was 10 in that profile tracy said yeah and he was all all fitted up like he was a two or three year old so here's another one of her babies okay so here's a throwback picture with uh todd wearing his sunglasses this is 1987 and i think this is ks's snappy pants is that right yeah. Yeah. And uh I've, Missy told me that Ken leased a quarter horse mare and bred it once and this was the result. You know, he mm -hmm. just had one full, so and he was used as a stallion, wasn't he, for a while? Snappy pan? Yeah. yeah. He was. Yeah. Yeah. Corn's had him his whole life. Is he the sire of Dun Up Snappy? Yeah. Yeah. I always liked him. He was a, a big body dun that Missy and and Todd had him. I don't think I have any pictures of him, but we were kind of focusing on KS's, you know what I mean? So some of them mm -hmm. got, I did get Dina's baby in here. And then of course, uh, Aston's got me some pictures of, of their babies from their KS's mare, but okay. So snappy here's pants was also the sire of the dam of one snappy ghost. Oh, really? Okay. And we had one snappy ghost on earlier, a snow cap, mm -hmm. right? Dusty was yep. riding him, yep. So now here's KS's. He's, he's a nifty twist. I went back to the calendars. So he's one of the, I would say, you know, later generations that they, they kept. And you know him pretty well, don't you? Yeah, he, he was my favorite in the barn. He what was, was he? a lot of fun. Okay. Yep. Okay. Oh, I think Missy just commented, still have Dunny. He is 29. So yep. that's cool. So, yeah. so this was one of your favorites. That's one thing uh, I don't know if a lot of people, they should realize just because kids can do anything with them, but the KS has had the, the dispositions, you know what I mean? And the personalities, they were just, mm -hmm. I know you always got a few when you raise that many, but uh, the majority of them were just so eager to please and easy going. And I think that's why kids liked them and why families kept coming back, you know, to that yeah. gene pool. So, well, he always said, um, you can't raise a good kid's pony with a rank stud. <laughs> That's right. And uh, if they couldn't be handled by kids and, you know, we were never afraid for people being right there on the highway. People would just stop by any time. Right. And want to see ponies. That and was good advertising. We were never afraid to lead them down there through the barn and open the stall doors and the studs put their heads out and kids would pet on them. Um, one of my favorite stories is about a filly who was Nifty's daughter. And a couple stopped by, and they had a little boy who was about two. He was big enough that he thought he didn't need to be carried, but he had no business being on his own two feet out there in the pasture with the weanling. And so his mother um, put him down between her feet and just holding his shoulders. And, you know, the, the weanlings, they were, as I recall, it was November, first part of November. Okay. So they were eight months old, most of them. And... Uh, they were just out there in the pasture, and his daughter, she came over there and put her head down and looked at that little boy, and, oh, well, you're kind of cute. <laughs> and, you know, he's two years old, so we all know how two-year-old children pet on ponies. Right. So he commenced to petting and, you know, slapping on her forehead, and she's like, well, well, nobody's ever done that to me before, but I guess that's all right. And then he starts petting right over the top of her eyes. So she squinches up one of her eyes and is looking at him like, well, nobody's ever done that to me either, but that's okay too. You're pretty cute. <laughs> and that was really just their disposition. Right. They, they knew kids and they loved kids. You should have handed that kid a clipper. Just went to town. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's. I think well, that I could was, clip him without a right, without a without halter it. on his head, ears, and everything. Right, and his babies were that way too. That makes it a lot easier, you know what I mean? Breeding horses is tough enough, but when you have the dispositions, and I think 
the Steels proved that by showing stallions, you know, when a lot of people wouldn't. They, they even brought stallions back out that they didn't have to. They wouldn't have had to bring out Smoky Pants again or Paper Tiger. You know, they still would have, because uh, they didn't really breed that many outside mares. They were mainly selling their foals. So, but that just led to people knowing the disposition. So, okay, now I moved on to KS's Dash for Pants. Again, the later, more later generation. So, you said he lived to be 19? Okay, and he was out of Doc's double date, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he'd be a full brother to Pants, Tough Date, and uh, Tough mm-hmm. Pants, and some of okay. those. But he was bred by mm-hmm. Steels, yeah. So yeah. he made a mark on POAs for sure. So, yeah. Okay. okay, so here's, I don't know if this is, this is Todd showing one. It's one of the red and white KSs. You'll know who it is. As soon as it That's, comes. Dash. That's Dash right there. Yeah, when I he thought was younger, it was when he, he was, was young. red. He and was, then he, when he was four, he shut off. Right, liver. so there he started to roan a little on the calendar picture, but the colored picture, he's, yeah, he's, I thought Todd showed him for sure. He's the one in the picture where the two brothers are standing there with the full brothers. Yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, here I should know who this is. I got notes, but I'll let you do it. You're better than the notebook. So, I think this is a famous one. Yeah, that's case the Tigers high class. High class, yeah. And Hall of Fame, in the Hall of Fame high class, right? I believe, yeah. yeah. Okay, I think these are all alias uh, Ghost Kings, these three. Uh, I don't know if Cardigo is one of them, but it's uh, yeah. Shane and Todd. And I don't know who. That's Shane with KS's alias Cartago. Okay. Todd Cartago. with KS's alias I'm No Ghost. Okay. And um, Deanna, I think, with KS's alias Royal King. Royal King. Okay. All right. Yeah, alias Ghost King started climbing up the, you know, the ladder too. And now he's, I think he's got 30 or 40 some wins as a sire. So he made his mark. Um you know, when I did my Legends book based on famous POA stallions, uh, to have Paper Tiger, Smoky Pants, and KS's JW White Lighting all in there. Now, if I did a chapter, you know, a, a two, a volume two, uh, Alias Ghost King would probably be in there. So, I mean, that says something else when, you know, almost all the stallions you use become legends. You know, that's just, yeah. that's a cool picture there. So, okay. I'm this is, pretty sure Cartago and... Royal King was both international champions. Okay, I think so. And I have a picture with uh, Pat standing there with uh, Cartago when he's in the pasture. Later, it'll, it'll be coming up towards the end. So mm-hmm. here's Todd it's with his Crimson, Crimson, Crimson Tiger, Tiger too. too. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Todd liked the red and white ones. I would venture to guess. So he seemed to pick those. So, and that's him riding him, I believe. He was just a model-looking POA. He was, yeah. he was a good-looking POA, and he, he had a nice shoulder and just a nice build about him. And then, of course, he in a great disposition, you know. I'm sure because a lot of kids did a lot of great things with him. I wrote a lot about him in the Paper Tiger chapter in the, in the book. So, okay, this is uh, the Grand Champion Gilding, I believe. Is it Ghost and Chrome or something like that? KS is Ghost and Chrome. Yep, Ghost and, and Chrome. His dam is KS is not KS is Doc's Tough Luck. Doc's, Doc's Tough, Tough Luck is a full sister to Doc's Double Date. Right. And they were best friends. We kept them until they were 31 and 32, and we buried them in the same hole. Wow, that's a great story right there. That was worth the episode right there. <laughs> that story, and they're both they, in the Hall of both, Fame, right? Yes. Yeah. So yeah. this. This gelding um, was one of Tough Luck's later foals, but KS's Tigers Be Lucky, which I was my pony, I supremed him. Okay. And KS's Tigers Lucky Lady were both also her foals. Okay. There again, that looks like the double tough, you know, you got that cross going there. So that's pretty mm-hmm. cool. But now that's with more of the modern because it's, so his sire was alias Ghost King? Yes. Yep. Okay. And again, he was a grand champion at the, national show which is now the congress 
So yeah, and I got notes here. Double date went in in 07. I remember that because I was at the convention. And then in 08, uh, Tough Luck went in. And then, of course, mm-hmm. White Lighting, Paper Tiger, and Smoky Pants all went in the Hall of Fame. So five of the breeding horses uh, that they use went in the Hall of Fame, plus all the, the ones they bred. So, uh, Okay, let's see. This is a Dash, I believe. This is one of Dash's babies. This is 2012. Yep, this case is Dash's hidden jewel. Hidden jewel, He's okay. He's out of a JW mare. Okay. And this, she's a Congress champion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I believe she won three-year-old mare. Okay. Here's Ghost and Chrome and Austin Corn. I threw in some of the corn kids, third generation okay so this is a throwback i'm kind of winding down a little bit uh, because you know you don't want to put people to sleep if you go to watch a movie for two hours you should be able to hear poa history for two hours right lydia but uh right (laughs) and i did again i apologize for such a late start but uh this is uh todd here holding uh this is ks's strawberry Strawberry. twist yeah one the which they broke up for a history lesson here, people that don't realize. They started the Select Sire of Futurity in 82, and then by 87, they decided it was so successful and so big, they decided they needed a junior and a senior, meaning early and late, because a lot of Appaloosa Futurities do that, where if a date, you know, when you're born, like after March 31st or whatever date you want to pick. And I don't know which date it was. That'd be a good trivia question. Dave Morris or somebody probably knows the answer to that. Uh, but anyway, they won the seniors and then they won the juniors with KS's kind of classy, right? I believe yeah. that year. Yep. Yeah. So that was pretty special. And they had won it in 84 with the Colt with Breeze and Cat. But. And there you are holding the 2007 Select Sire Futurity Champion. So that'd be the fourth KS's Select Sire Futurity Champion. And KS's Some Ghosts Are Royal. Some and Ghosts. She was are... out of a Smoky Pants mare. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. And then she grew up to be a big, powerful mare, and there she is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like it when Futurity winners go on to do something because, like Breezing Cat, he became one of the best Futurity winners ever. You know, he went on to have a a storied career and hall of fame career so his win was just kind of an afterthought you know what i mean and then this mare his baby win i mean and then this mare is the same way you know she won as a, a three-year-old she was the grand champion right yeah yeah so there you are smiling and she was also fourth in trail in gpfc three and four-year-old trail okay and there you are with her at the futurity uh, mm-hmm. the same futurity she won she had those dark legs too didn't she yep. yeah but she had a lot more color on her and yeah she looked good under saddle too so okay there's our sponsor again ks's koi's fly high i got his name memorized now so he's in hope arkansas uh so here ken is a little later in life and that's diane peaton she was the president of the club at the time so uh this is for a hall of fame award i believe right once yep. it gets to yep. you Samantha for KS's Tigers High Class. Tiger, okay, KS's Tigers High Class, and that's Samantha, okay. So mm-hmm. I wanted to throw that picture in there of Ken. And then, not to be outdone, there's Miss Pat with uh, however you pronounce his name, Cartigo. KS is Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is a snapshot, I believe, uh, was taken by the Corns when they were down on one of their visits. There's a lot of uh, high quality horse flesh in this picture right here, and the gators in the picture. Uh, yep. But, yep, that's a good picture. So, and there's just some candid shots that people took over the years. You guys had a lot of visitors over the years, uh, people picking up babies. And uh, there's some pasture shots. I always like this picture. I happen to I see, do too. Yeah, I've seen this picture somewhere. This should be on a in a magazine. I mean, that's a great picture. I think I've seen that somewhere. I don't know if somebody showed that to me one time, but I just seen it today, and I said I remember seeing this uh, somewhere. But well, I had never seen that picture. 
Oh, you never seen that that one? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, well, Lydia, again, I thank you for for coming on tonight. I'm gonna kind of wrap it up, you know, and just like I always do, I got a few more pictures, a couple more ones we've seen already. Uh, but you know, I I just wanted to honor the Steels and uh, they're you know number one breeder of the POA breed for national champions. That's saying a lot. Over 200 wins. So and just all the. 23 supreme champions or more 23 at least that i can prove and eight hall of famers so uh again i would have been lost without you on here so <laughs> it was my pleasure thank you for the opportunity all right thanks a lot lydia you have a good night thank you you too all right bye all right i want to thank lydia gove again from alabama for uh, being our guest Turn the phone off there. So I hope everybody heard her well. Uh, Tracy didn't say nothing uh, that we didn't. So, And I want to thank everybody for commenting tonight, Tracy and Missy and the other people that I can't tell who you are. Uh, but thanks for all your comments. Again, you can go on to that Ecam Live, and uh, Tracy can probably send a link or something, or I can try to do it and uh, show you how to do it. So like next week, I can see who's uh, commenting. So I have Paper Tiger on here again because he really kick-started uh, the modern POAs for the Steels. Again, KS's Siri Warrior was uh, was a supreme champion of theirs that they bred, and he was one of their first great ones they bred. But then Paper Tiger became the stallion that launched them into uh, superstardom. You know, a lot of his foals just became everything, do-it-all POAs. Here's a cool picture here that I needed to to put in here. So this is Ken and chip and then richard corn and todd corn with four uh babies in tulsa i'm pretty sure this is in tulsa and these are all ks's babies and uh i don't know the names of these i guess i should have kept lydia on a little longer but this is a cool picture i uh, got some hall of famers in there richard corn and ken Steele. again the corns uh did a lot for the steels uh showing poas for them they they were very close friends uh, because of POAs, and that's what's cool about POAs, you know, the friends you make and from different states and get to see them and go to their places and see them at the shows and the sales. So, yep, Tracy said that's a great photo. That's why I'm ending with this photo. I could have put it way on early on because this picture would have been in the early 90s, but this was at the Red Earth and the Slick Sire for charity in uh, Tulsa. So some cute KS babies there. So I'm going to quick go through some. I don't want to bore people. I won't say all the KS's names, but I'm just going to read off some of the Supreme Champions as we're winding down the show here to, to honor all the KS's. Because, again, to have 20-some Supreme Champions from one farm, I mean, that's just mind-boggling. And uh, we'll start with some of the newer ones and work our way down. So we have Dashing Illusion, Alias Smoking Ghost, Alias Cardigo, Forever a Ghost, Tiger Be Lucky, Flashy Pants, Crimson Tiger 2, Smooth Twist. We've seen pictures of most of these tonight. Tiger's Lucky Lady, Tiger's High Class. We've seen a picture of that one. Candy Pants, Some Kind of Twist, Bandita Breeze, Tiger's Breezing Cat, Stan Me Grand, Cream Puff Twist, Tiger's Steel Breeze, Tiger's Hot Stuff, Flaming Tiger, Tiger's Jewel, Tiger's Paper Lion, Fancy Doll, and KS's Siri Warrior was their first one. He was registration number 13951. So they got into POAs in 64. He was born in 71. He was the 13th, almost 14,000th POA registered. Uh, and then, of course, in the Hall of Fame, seven of those are in the Hall of Fame, along with KS's Half Moon Twist, three of their uh, Foundation Sires, Paper Tiger, Smoky Pants, and KS's JW White Lightings in the Hall of Fame, along with Doc's Double Date and Doc's Tough Luck, a couple of uh, Double Tough Daughters. And then, of course, Ken went in the Hall of Fame in 1994, and Pat joined him in 1998. And the Hall of Fame started in 1990, so it didn't take long uh, for both of them to go into the 
Hall of Fame. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, look at one of the greatest breeding programs in the history of POAs, KS's Pony Farm from Moulton, Alabama, Ken and Pat Steele. Uh, um, thank you to Lydia for being a guest tonight. Uh, thanks to Chris England for sponsoring us with his KS Stallion, uh, Missy and Lydia for getting us pictures, and everybody who uh, commented tonight. So I believe, let me check my notes. What, where are we going next? Let's see. It's a secret. Okay, so KS. So next week we're going to be talking about the straw POAs. Double L's Dickens was a double L straw uh, grandson in, uh, he, in Wisconsin. Fred and Jan Bruner had the straw POAs, and a lot of them weren't named straw, like Hall and Oates, Primetime, POAs like that. So uh, start contacting me with your pictures. If you had a straw-related POA, uh, you could always IM me or uh, text me or send me an email at krorksales.com. So... Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight, and uh, enjoy the song.